Hi, fifth grade. This is Mrs. Lemoyne again, and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 20, Shipping Trash. Let's estimate volumes. Okay, a number talk. Find the value of each expression mentally. Oh, well, that's just a math fact. I know that one. That one is 32. 8 times 8. Well, we're going to add 4 more 8 to 32, right? And that is going to be 64. You could just double 32 as well because we doubled 4 and we'll double 32. There are two ways to do that one. All right. 8 times 8 doubled, so we have to double that again, right? Double 64, that would be 8, and 6 plus 6 is 12. So I'm going to double that again. And then our last one, and then 20. Well, I'm just going to take the product that I got from 8 times 8 times 2, and I'm going to add a 0. Because there's that's just a multiplying by another 10, right? Very good. That's pretty easy. All right. Moving on to what a waste. What a waste. The United States ships recyclable goods like plastic to other countries for processing. We're going to estimate the volume of recyclable materials that our school produces. How can we estimate the number of cubic feet the class of the class recycling bin holds? Well, in order to estimate the volume, that's cubic feet, that's volume, we're going to have to know the length, the width, and the height of our recycling bin to get the volume. Okay, so let's erase that and write it up here. Remember that volume, oops, volume equals length times width times height. So I went out and took a picture of our school's recycling bin, and that's what this piece is here. So to estimate the value of that, I'm going to estimate how far, how long this is and how long this is, and we're using feet. So I'm going to say that this is maybe one foot. I'm going to get a different color so you guys can see. So this is one foot, and I would say that this is about three feet. And then I'm going to estimate how tall it is, uh, let's say this is two feet because I'm going to estimate that this is three feet tall. So the number of cubic feet that our recycling bin holds would be one times two times three or six feet cubed. All right, the number of cubic feet that the school recycling bin holds, that would be this picture here. So how long do you think that is? Well, if this man here is about six foot tall, I would say that this is probably five feet. And then I'm going to guess that it's about four feet tall. And then I'm going to say it's not quite a rectangle. Let's say it's four feet wide as well. So we're going to say five times four times four. So this is 20 times four. And four times two is eight. So I'm going to say eight cubic feet. Now, these are just estimates. I don't know how much these bins can hold. These are just estimates. Okay. Let's see what our next question is. About how many cubic feet of recyclable... Okay, let's go back and remember that we estimated this to be 6 feet cubed and this to be 80. Is that what we said? feet cubed. Okay. About how many cubic feet of recyclable materials do you think our school produces in each amount of, um, produces in each amount of time? So how much in a day? Well, I know that for us at our school, I would think, um, if there were about 20 classrooms and if they fill up a recycling bin each day, um, I'm going to say that that would be, let's say, 20 classrooms. Let's say 10 classrooms. And if we fill up that each day, that would be times 6, right? 10 classrooms fill up 
six bins, 10 classrooms fill up six bins, or no, one, this would be one bin, right? So that'd be 60 for 10 classrooms. If they filled up one bin, let's say they filled up three bins, that would be 180 feet cubed. And in a week, in a week, we could take that 180 That was every day and multiply it times seven. And so we go over here, 180 times seven. That is 56, right? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 1,260 feet cubed. In a month, that means we would take 180 times, um, well, let's not do that. Let's take, let's erase that. So if this is one week, actually I'm estimating that wrong too, aren't we? We don't run out in school seven days a week. So let's do five. So 180 times five. So let's do that. 180 times five. Five times zero, five times eight is 40. Five times one is five plus, okay, so 900. That's an easier number anyway, feet cubed. So now we're going to take that 900 and there's about four weeks in a month. Four times nine is 3,600 feet cubed. So also, <clears throat> we're in school 10 months a year, aren't we? We're not in school 12 months a year. We go to school 10 months. So 3,600 times 10 months would give me 36,000 zero, 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 36, feet cubed, cubed, Miss Lemoyne, cubic feet. Do you think all of the recyclable materials your school produces in a year could fit in your classroom? Ooh, that's a good question. So if we recycled this much, is our classroom big enough to hold 36,000 cubic feet? Well, I would say our classroom is about 20 by 20, and it's about... I think we have 12 foot ceilings. So two times two is four plus those two zeros. That's 400 times 12. I know that 12 times four is 4,800 cubic feet. So I would say no. We could not fit all of the trash that we accumulated for our school in one year in this classroom, even if we filled it from the top to the bottom. I'm, I'm not sure. All right. That was a lot of trash, and a lot of recyclable that we would do. How did you um, estimate the volume of the bit of the small bins? Well, I estimated the length, the width, and the height, and I multiplied those together. And then I did the same with the large bins. Okay, plastic palooza. Your goal is to decide by estimating whether it's possible for all of the elementary schools in the country to produce enough recyclable plastic to fill cargo containers that the United States ships each year. A standard cargo container for a ship measuring 20 feet long by 8 feet wide by 8 feet tall, what is the volume of the container? So my first thing that I have to do is I have to find the volume of this container. So Again, length times width times height. So 20 times 8 times 8. Well, 8 times 8 is 64. And then I can do 64 twice, which would be 128, and add a 0. So that's feet cubed or cubic feet. Cubic feet. Each school makes about 40 cubic feet of recyclable plastic each day. How many days would it take for a school to fill one cargo container? So if it's 40 feet a day, and this is the volume of the container, and we want to find out how many days it would take, I think we're going to have to do division. So we're going to have to say how many 40s are in 1,280. To do this problem, I'm going to start with this base number and this number right? 
How many 40s or how many 4s are in 12? Well, there are 3. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 4 is 12. And we're left with 80. And how many 40s are in 80? 2. So it would take 32 days. 32 days. All right. In 2018, the United States exported 210,000 cargo containers of plastic. And there are about 70,000 elementary schools in the United States. How many cargo containers does each school need to fill in order to fill all of these containers? How many cargo containers does each school need to fill in order to fill all of those containers? Well, I know that... 3 times 7 is 21, so I think I would need 3, right? So 210,000 divided by 7, 3 times 7 is 21, right? And it's 70,000, sorry, 70,000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I think it would be 3 times 0, 0, 0, 0, 21,000. So I'm going to say three, okay, three cargo containers. All right. Do you think all the schools in the country produce enough plastic recyclables to fill all the cargo containers the United States ships? Show or explain your reasoning. Well, if it takes 32 days to fill one cargo container, right, 32 days to fill one container, it would take 96 days to fill three containers, right? So 3 times 32 is 96. So 3 to fill, so days, so Right, 32 days, three containers, 32 days, so 96 days. So let's see, the 70,000 different schools could fill 210 containers with plastic in a school in a year. So it would take, I think, one year. All right. That was some thinking there. How many days would it take for a school to fill one container? So again, we decided that it was 96 days, uh, 32 days, 32 days to fill one cargo container. How can we use the equation 128 divided by 4 is 32 to find the value of 1,288 divided by 40? They have the same value because if 32 groups of 4 is 128, putting 10 times as many in each group does not change the value. Does not change the value. How many cargo containers does each school need to fill in order to fill all of the containers? in order to fill all of the containers. How many cargo containers does each school need to fill all of these containers? I thought we figured that that was um, 96 days. How many cargo containers does each school need to fill all of these containers? Yeah, that's a hard one, let's see. There we go. How did you find the value of 210 divided by 70,000? Well, I said 21 divided by 7 is 3, because remember we can cancel all of these zeros as long as there's the same amount of zeros. And then I could test that by saying 70,000 times 3, and I would get 21, 1, 2, 3, 4, 210,000. 
Do you think all of the schools in the country produce enough plastic recyclables to fill all the cargo containers that the United States fit? I'm not sure. It's possible, but the schools are not all the same size, and some may make a lot less plastic than others. So I'm not sure how, how good our estimates are either. So that's an I'm not sure question. Today we made estimates for the amount of recyclable plastic elementary schools might produce and compared this with the amount of plastic the United States ships abroad. What are some of the different estimates you made and worked on today? Well, the volume of recycling bins, the amount of things we put in the bins each day, the number of schools, and the amount of recyclable plastics shipped. Those are all the estimates I made. How is calculating with estimates the same as using exact values? How is it different? I still need to know what operation to use. I need to know whether to multiply or divide. But when I round the numbers, it's much easier. Estimation makes things much easier. If you knew that there were 68,372 schools rather than 70,000, and the United States shipped 207,364 cargo containers of plastic, would that change your answer to the question and whether the schools could fill all those containers? No, I don't think I could find the value of the quotient, um, but it should still be close to three, right? We could round those numbers to 70 and round 207 to 210, and then it would still be close to three shipping con containers. All right. Oh, we're already down to the cool down. And the last lesson we're going to do for this unit. A different shipping container is 40 feet long, 9 feet wide, and 8 feet tall. What's the volume? So again, we're going to use length times width times height to do 40 times 9 times 8. And I know that 9 times 8 is 72, and I'm going to multiply that times 4 instead of 40. So that's going to be 8. It's going to be 148, and I'm going to add the zero. So, oh, I think I did that wrong. 20, 28, not 14. 7 times 8 is 28. There we go. Now, 2,880. 2,880. See, even Miss Lemoyne makes mistakes, so it's good to check your work. I knew that it didn't make sense. A school makes 24 cubic feet of recyclable plastic each day. How many days does it take to fill this container? Um, explain your thinking. Well, if the container is 2,880, I'm going to have to divide that by 24 to find out how many days it would take to fill it, right? If they do this many a day. So 24 going to 28, it won't go into two, go into 28 one time with four left over. Bring down that zero, I'm sorry, bring down that eight. 24 times two, two times four is eight, two times two is four, and I have zero left over. I bring down my zero, and I'm gonna have to say 120. And I can check that with multiplication, can't I? Four times zero is zero, four times two is eight, four times one is four. I'm done with the four. This is going to be 20 times 0, so I'm going to have to write like that, right? 20 times 0 is 0. 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 1 is 2. Oops, that's a 0. All right, so I got my dividend by multiplying my quotient times my divisor. Um, yes, and I got my dividend. So I know that it's 120, and it's 120 days. So my answer is 120 days. I always go back to my question to label my work. All right, that's it for this unit. Your teacher may choose to do the next lesson, lesson 21, which is a food journal, a food waste journal. Um, we aren't going to do that in my fifth grade class, but you might do that with your teacher. All right, I'll see you in Unit 5. Thank you, boys and girls.